Hi, my name is Josh Connor. I'm a student at Texas A&M Commerce, and I did a math fair presentation over tessellations, and this is my finished product. Uh, first of all, tessellation is created when shape is repeated over and over again, covering a plane without any gaps or overlaps. There are three types of tessellations. You have your regular tessellations, you have your semi-regular tessellations, and you have your non-regular tessellations. Your regular tessellations are made up entirely of congruent regular polygons, all meeting vertex to vertex. You can only use triangles and hexagons and squares in these, and these are some examples uh, shown right there. In your semi-regular tessellations, um, these are made up with two or more types of regular polygons that are fitted together in such a way that the same polygons in the same order surround every vertex. See, you can see you have triangles and you have your hexagons in there, and these are your types uh, right there. Your non-regular tessellations are those in which there is no restriction on the order of polygons around the vertices. These are the types you see in uh, your MC Escher photos, so on and so forth. These are more tricky, um, but the end result will be a lot better. There are different ways you can rotate or change these uh, regular, semi-regular, non-regular tessellations. You can translate, which is just sliding the polynomial along. You have your example right there shown. Translation, just sliding it over to create new product. Your rotation is when you rotate um, along the plane. Just slide it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, just so long it, it fits all together. Your reflection is basically a mirror image of what you see, and um, there's an example right there. This is one I created by hand. Um, usually you draw these, but I decided to make a three-dimensional one. And this is what basically it should look like. You have your one plane back here, followed by the second plane, the third plane. And uh, you can keep doing that over and over depending on the uh, size of the piece of paper that you have. Your steps to create your tessellations um, are shown right here. To create any tess tessellation, you can start with a square tile, draw a line in one corner to an adjacent corner on the two adjacent sides. Um, then you need to cut these pieces out, as shown right here. You draw these lines right here, then you cut them out. Your step two, um, to create the simplest type of tra uh, tessellation, the translation, the slide each piece to its opposite side. You see right here, you slide that, um, that piece you cut out over to this side, and that piece up top you cut out, you slide it to the bottom side. And then the, uh, the part in the white is going to be your um, starting block. You trace three, or step three, you're going to trace the tile on a piece of paper that's four times larger than the, than the tile, depending on how many repetitions you would like. So you can just trace this on a piece of paper, a uh, graph paper if you want, and just repeat this step over and over. You see each side is going gonna, is gonna to lock in with the opposite side, so it should work. Your step four is what I just said. Um, you're going to slide it over and over until you have the, side, uh, the size that you wish. Step five, you can color and create um, whatever you want. In this one, it looks like they created little birds, um, and it's just up to your imagination after that. And these postcards in the middle are of M.C. Escher, all using tessellations. Um, you can see, I don't know how he did this, when he did it, but he, he did it. So you have your, your birds and your fish, and it's just remarkable what he could do.